Hello, my name is John Gabriel, and this is the new calculus channel. So today, I'm going to be talking about uh, a special subject. Uh, in fact, again, once the most important subject in mathematics, which is the derivation, the perfect derivation of number. And since I'm feeling good, I think it's going to be a good video, <laughs> and not as drawn out or boring as the other videos. So let's begin. Now, uh, I had a question from one of my subscribers about one of the statements I made. So for example, I wrote down what you see here, this particular uh, diagram, and I said that represents a number because, or not a number, but uh, a ratio, because this line segment length is being compared to this line segment length. And I said, that's if, if, if this line segment can be expressed in terms of this line segment, which on this side here, it's called the consequent, okay? The one that follows the colon, the colon is the consequent, which later became the denominator. And the one which precedes it is called the antecedent. So if the antecedent can be, or the numerator, which became the numerator later on, uh, be, can be measured in terms of the consequent, then this does represent a number. So it's a very subtle distinction. In other words, what, uh, what I'm telling you is that this here is a number if and only if this measure, this length here, actually measures this line. Okay, so say for example, say for example, you had pi like that and the unit one and the unit one well does this ratio here let's say that the unit one is this guy here right let's say it's this guy here let's say it's this guy so does and this is approximately three times oh well whatever let's assume that this is approximately 3.4 what 3.14 one five nine etc. So does this represent a number? No, because because this length here cannot be measured in terms of this one. Okay, let's make it a little a little more convincing by adding one more of these. And so if I left it like that, then that's the number three, right? Because I've got three of these uh, line segments. But I'm going to take a little part that's incommensurable, this part here, and add it over here. And now. And now, and now, this, which is supposedly pi, cannot be represented, cannot be measured by this length here. So the most important thing to remember is that a ratio is just simply a comparison, okay? It's simply a comparison of magnitudes or sizes. It doesn't have to be line segments. It can be weights or masses, okay? It can be volumes or areas. So, uh, so how did all this begin? Well, Let's go back to the most brilliant people who ever existed. And again, you all know who they were. They were the ancient Greeks. Nobody ever matched their clarity of thought. Now, so their first definition here says, Meros esti meiethos, meiethus, to elason tu misonas, tu misonas. I always get the pronunciation of this wrong. It's misonas. Otan katametri to mison. And what it means is simply that a magnitude is just part of of another magnitude, the lesser of the greater, when it measures the greater. And what it's telling you is that we normally measure the, the antecedent with the consequent, okay? So this here is the magnitude that measures this magnitude here. But unless it measures it, this here cannot be said to be a number because we give these line segments names, okay? We give them names. If we choose this to be the unit, then, and we and we place two of them alongside, then that becomes two, right? And if we place three of them alongside, becomes three. And if we want to represent fractions, then we simply go the opposite way, right? So say, for example, we wanted a third, then what we would do is put one like that, and, and, then, and then add another two, add another two of these. Oh, let me do this, like so. Okay, another one there, and 
another one there, and now that represents a third, okay, because we know this distance is a third, and that's one. So, so we start off, or the Greeks started off with magnitudes, okay, they were not numbers, there's nothing here about numbers, all right, and a ratio is defined here in Greek, in the third definition, where it says, logos esti dio meathon omoyenon ikata ikata ti Okay, so what that means, literally translated, is ratio is two magnitudes, homogeneous, or uh, in respect of thickness or measure, no relationship. Okay, so uh, that's all it is. So if they've got no no relationship, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, it means it has a relationship. Ikata pilikotita pia skesis. I'm going ahead of myself. It has a relationship. And that's what that means. And so it says a ratio is a type of condition with respect to sizes of two magnitudes of the same kind. That's just very complicated and it's nonsense. Let me define a ratio for you properly. A ratio is just a comparison. So in other words, it's just this colon between two magnitudes and it doesn't matter what they are either this one or this one is just a comparison both of these are ratios and in this case here yeah, this ratio is also a number because equal parts of the consequent which are this here can measure the antecedent and similarly here this part measures the antecedent so as long as holes of the antecedents, holes, not as in holes in a wall, but as complete a whole, as holes or parts of a whole or both can measure the antecedent, then this here becomes a number, right? Because we could define that, we could define the antecedent to be the unit and then uh, call everything else by the appropriate name, okay? Because then we can say, right, a unit is one of these and two units is two of these. And if, if this is the unit, then this here would be a third. And if we added another equal part like this over here, like this one, then it would be two thirds, right? Okay, do you understand that? Well, all this is dis discussed in my book on measures. Now, I wanna give you some advice to those of you who are studying ancient Greek and Greek. Uh, if, for example, you try and look up the word pilikotita, you'll have to change the accents at the top. So this pilikotita here, this word here, pilikotita, has two accents on top here. And in modern Greek, it doesn't mean the same thing. So, uh, in fact, the word uh, pilos in Greek means clay, and pilinos means of clay. So, you know, it's very difficult to understand exactly what the ancients were saying because some of the words are not quite the same but we can determine if we think clearly the meaning from context okay and I've done this and I've done this all in my uh, free ebook which you will find online and I'll place a link to it in the details section and then I've also been asked to speak a little bit more about myself. You know, this, this, the, the concept of magnitude or size or quantity came long before number and a ratio even came long before number. A ratio is not a number. So when you see this sort of thing here, um, it only becomes a number when you uh, write it differently. So for example, you would write it with a vinculum like this, then take this part, put it on the top, and this part on the bottom, on the bottom, ah, doesn't matter, something like that, and then this here would be the number two. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so maybe you should just slow down the video and read over these things and make sure you understand. So I'm going to close it out and just tell you that during my very early years, I desperately wanted to know what all these things mean. And I could never understand number until I began with 
the book of elements which is part, book five by the way i'm looking at book five yeah and then book seven defines numbers okay so it's no coincidence that book five comes long before number right and ratios come long before the natural number so you'll see most of the idiots in mainstream mathematics and in universities and school talk about beginning with the natural numbers no that's entirely wrong you cannot begin with natural numbers because a lot of uh, machinery goes uh, into the process of defining a number and you start off with a magnitude then ratios of magnitudes and you build up to the unit and then from the unit you eventually get to number <clears throat> so all these things <coughs> all these things are essential to understanding the concept of number and nothing you have in modern mathematics such as set theory and Dedekind cuts and Cauchy sequences and all that nonsense properly defines number okay you cannot understand number until you understand Euclid's elements and so number being the most important thing in mathematics is what you have to understand 100 percent okay so and then Another thing is, uh, my journey has been pretty difficult in life. Um, I once reached a point where I had sufficient funds that I didn't need to work, and then I gave away most of my wealth, intending to exit the planet, and obviously I didn't, and that's why I'm still here, and you're watching this video. But... Uh, you know, I, I reached a point where I decided that there is really no no valid reason for being alive. But not to act too philosophical. The reason I'm compiling these videos is to help the future youth. And there is so much more that I could say. Uh, but there are certain things I will hold back because of the way I've been libeled and slandered. Uh, and I know that others in the future will look at this work and take it a lot further than I've taken, but it's going to take them a very long time because uh, my research spans at least 40 years. <laughs> in fact, I, I started as young as nine years old, and now I'm 57. So uh, don't rule me out yet. And physically, even though I have thorns in the flesh, I'm not that bad. Uh, I mean, I... I I probably look better in the body than most 25 year olds. Um, uh, I almost have wash, washboards, washboard abs, <laughs> if you believe it or not, but that does me no good if my lungs are uh, busy dying. And so speaking of lungs, I'm very out of breath right now. I'll try to uh, produce other videos when I'm feeling good like I am today. <coughs> and Hopefully, uh, if you ask me questions and I have the energy, I'll produce a video on the topic. So anyway, I think I've rambled on a bit. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and that you'll join me again soon, sometime in the near, in the near future. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.